Launching to space, of course, was a momentous experience, but oddly enough, it was quite familiar because of all the training we had. So those 10 minutes in the capsule riding the Soyuz rocket, there was the vibration, the pressure, the acceleration, the, the pressure in your seat. But after those eight minutes of busy time and hyper awareness, if you want, of our environment, is when I had my first view of the Earth from space. The launch was at dusk, so quickly we entered Penumbra and into night. And by the time we reached orbit, it was pitch black outside, and shortly thereafter came our first orbital sunrise during the rendezvous to ISS. And I will never forget that sight, the thin blue line of the atmosphere, the curve of the horizon. That's when it became real, really at a gut level, that I'm actually in space. We are on orbit, this is not a sin. Because your mind tends to go the reassuring route of pretending it's just a game. You know, that this is reality. We are in space and orbit. And that view, that sunrise, I'll never forget that. Through the crummy little side window of the Soyuz, still just amazing. It's like burned in my, my memory. I, of course, spent a lot of time at the cupola, looking at the Earth. And what has always struck me every time I went there is how beautiful the Earth is, how fragile it looks, how alive it obviously is with the clouds, the water. It's like it's breathing. The auroras, the presence of humans at night, it's obvious with the lights. But is the death around the Earth that's startling. How this beautiful, shining oasis of life is there naked in the middle of pitch black death, a vacuum of space. And then there's the dance of the celestial bodies around. The moon is there, but the moon is just a rock. The sun is just a ball of fire. And here's the earth this perfect oasis. So even though I knew this abstractly, like everybody does now, we have all seen those images, to, to see it with your own eyes, you develop that sense of awe. And also, you cannot go to space and continue, if you were, thinking that resources are infinite. They're obviously not. It's in your face. It's a finite system, a closed loop system. There's no new air, no new water that gets to Earth ever. It's all recycled and has been for billions of years. And it is perfectly balanced and perfectly matched to our needs. We are matched to her. That concrete realization that uh, we belong to Earth and not vice versa, it's, it's kind of a mental shift to see that we just know where else we could go. We can talk about colonizing other planets, but you know, kind of smarter and cheaper to just take care of Earth as she is. So that was very endearing, that vision. And I can close my eyes and, and always go back to the cupola looking at the planet. And that blue line, it's unbelievable. Uh, it makes the Earth look alive. She's glowing. Well, the little bubble we live in is tiny. And that was very, uh, in a way, sobering perspective to get how fragile, unique, and just sacred really our spaceship Earth is and the responsibility we have to be good shepherds of her. It is the home of billions of humans and billions and billions of other species, completely autonomous in the vacuum of space. It's just a miracle. You want to protect her because it is our only spacecraft, the whole of us. We're all astronauts living in a deadly vacuum of space, kept alive by this beautiful, perfect machine.